Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, my name is Steve, one of the performance coaches here at SSP. And once again, we're going to jump right back into our series on uh, explosive agility. We've talked so far about you know, moving in all three planes of motion, doing it at a base position, all these different movements. We've done it very, very structured. So it's been all pre-programmed, meaning the athlete knows where they're going to go in the drill. They can focus on the technique of it. Obviously, once our athletes get good at that, we need to make the transition to sport. Sport is much more random or chaotic. Um, their cues are not me saying go every time. It's usually off of somebody else or an external object, like a ball or whatever it may be. So we now start making the connection from it being pre-programmed. They know what they're doing. It's structured to random and chaotic and more sport-like. So we're gonna kind of talk about a pre-programmed drill and how to progress that to making it more random or chaotic, all right? So I'm gonna bring in Matt and Josh and we're gonna go over a shuffle drill. Remember a couple um, entries ago we talked about shuffling and just how to move across laterally. So we're gonna go over a shuffle drill. It's gonna be a shuffle down and back drill. It's gonna start out very, very pre-programmed structured. We're gonna go off of a verbal cue, me saying go, which is what we use all the time. Okay, so let's bring it in. They're gonna line up right behind this blue cone. When I say go, they're gonna shuffle down to this blue cone and back as fast as they can, right? They shuffle down, we're gonna change direction step and get back there as fast as they can. But they know where they're going and they know when they're going, it's when I say go. Are right, you guys ready? Drop it down and go! They shuffle down, they punch, they come back. Okay, good, so that's off of a verbal cue. They know what they're doing, they heard the go, they win. So now let's make it more visual because a lot of sport is visual. I see somebody run and I need to now run as well. I, need, I see a ball, I need to go get to that ball. That kind of idea. So we'll go off my hand drop. A very simple visual cue where it drops, that's when they go. So drop back down guys. Hand is up, when I drop the hand they shuffle down and back. Relax. So they get so used to hearing a go, they always want to go off the go. Now I change it, drop the hand, different stimuli on how they're going to go ahead and go across. So now we're going to take that same drill and make it very, very random. So it's going to be very random, very chaotic. They don't know which way they're going to go or when they have to go. They're going to react like a person or a man. So similar to playing defense in basketball, soccer, lacrosse, or any sport where I have to move across laterally. Football, O-lineman, quarterback, things of that nature. So they're going to get in the middle of the lane now. They're going to face each other. I'm gonna have one person be on offense. That person will decide how they're gonna shuffle, when they're gonna shuffle, and try to create separation from the person on defense. The person on defense is gonna to try to shatter them. Once again, very random, very chaotic. They don't know what's going on. Matt right here in the gray shirt is gonna be on offense. Josh on the other side is on defense. On my go, they're gonna go ahead and start moving. We're gonna do it for about 10 seconds, okay? So guys, drop it down. Ready, and go. So Josh, especially on defense, it's very random and chaotic for him. He doesn't know which way he's going to have to go and when he's going to have to change direction and relax. So beautiful. And then I would obviously switch, put Josh on offense so Matt has the same reaction. So he has to react if a man doesn't know where he's going to go. So all those things we worked on, pushing to base, shuffling when it's structured, he has to use all that stuff in a random and chaotic environment. He doesn't have time to think. He's just got to do it. So we got to create those motor patterns so he can do it now in a functional, more sport-like setting. We'll do one more example. We'll work on turning and running now. All the guys scoot over this white cone over here, so we'll just move over a little bit. They're going to work on turning and running, so using that crossover step. So we're going to start making it very, once again, pre-programmed. On my go, they're going to turn and sprint through this white line right here. I'll scoot over a little bit. They're going to turn and sprint through that white line. On my go, they know where they're going to go. They know when they're going to go. They're just going to go off of me saying that. Alright, so they're dropping it down, ready and go, go and run, go ahead and bring it back. So that's a very pre-programmed way to do that drill. So now we'll make it a little more sport-like, more reactionary. All have them face each other once again, I'll pick an offensive person, which will be Matt right here in the gray shirt, and Josh will react. I'll say Matt, go when you're ready. Matt's going to turn and run whenever he wants to, and then it's a full-out race through that white line. So that person on defense has to react quickly and have a sense of urgency to go ahead and beat the offensive person, okay? When you're ready, Matt, go ahead and go. Turns and runs, and now it's a little bit competitive in nature too, which obviously sport is going to be very competitive. It's a little competitive in nature, so it gives them a little bit of fun with this drill as well too. It's a flat-out race. Last drill we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab a tennis ball from over here. And we're going to make it competitive in nature again, all right? So now it's going to be a visual cue. We're going to go one person at a time, so it's not necessarily man against man. 
but I'm going to have Matt just get the base position. I'm going to drop the ball. His goal is to get the ball before it bounces twice. Right? We can do this in all different planes of motion. We're going to do it running straight ahead, and then we'll do one rotational as well, too. So he's here. He reacts off, when I talk, reacts off of when I toss the ball. No verbal cues, nothing else. I toss it. He gets it before it bounces twice. One, and good. And he dives and got it. Awesome. So now I'll do the same thing with Josh real quick, and then we'll work on different uh, angles and, and doing it rotation. And bounces one and two, and he gets it. So we're working off how quick can he react off of me dropping that ball. He's got to get out of his base. So he's got to have a stable base like we've worked on, and he's got to drive out quickly. We'll do it one more time just to show you how to do it rotationally. We'll have Matt face this ball now. I'll scoot here so he can see me, but I'll toss the ball out. He's got to either use his crossover, his 90 degree cut, whatever he wants, to get that ball before it bounces twice. And one and two. Beautiful. We'll do one with Josh real quick. Same idea. Josh face the wall. Same idea. I toss one and two and he gets the ball. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. So that's just a way we can now make that connection from drills that are very pre-programmed, structured, we know what we're doing, to stuff that we don't quite know when we're going to have to leave, which direction we're going to have to go, and which movement skill we're going to have to use. That makes it much more sportive. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Did it survive?